Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to Pixar Spective, where we'll be talking about a sequel, again, to another long-loved Pixar film. Only this one may not be as bad as you think it would be. So let's talk about Finding Dory. I'm Random Bystander here. I'm the Wash. I'm a fish. <laughs> We're bringing it back die. together. We finally have. <laughs> well, we I have blow on Dang it! Because I made that joke when we did Finding Nemo. Yeah, you did. You uh, did. And that was an thing too. I didn't time. even put that in the episode. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. So I'll I'll feel original then. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're gonna be talking about Finding Dory, which yeah. we have some very interesting experience seeing it Ooh, personally. Oh boy! Yeah, cool. I. I we we had the worst theater experience watching this. <laughs> this was um good lord um yeah this was 2016. That uh, explains the worst theater experience. So we all uh, saw this the three of us together. Um, yes. Yay. Uh, yeah. Yay. Fine. It, it took like uh what like Masters University like that was mm. the last time. Um so this time we all saw it together or at least we attempted to. Because our local theater was under construction, so uh, Re- renovation. Yeah, it was in renovation. Adding- so the majority of the th- of the actual um, cineplexes uh, were closed. So there were only a couple that were playing movies. And as a result, the first time uh, we went over there, completely booked solid. We there was just no seats left. Yeah, uh, Finding Dory was completely sold out. Yeah. First. So, I mean, to be fair, we saw it the first weekend, I think, or at least yeah, I think it was the first I, weekend. It was the first weekend, yeah. So I think and we ended up delaying it for the 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 weekend after that. I just remember going to Chipotle afterwards and feeling <laughs> defeated. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of food places in that plaza. It's really nice. It's a very nice. I missed that plaza. It, it's a good. It's a good plaza. But <laughs> I Let, yeah. welcome to our plaza perspective. <laughs> but anyway, we tried again like a week later, and I think we booked take tickets ahead of time just in case. Well, the thing is, uh, we we attempted to watch this. I, I, I only remember this because of one particular scene that I'll that I'll, I'll bring up later. But we attempted to watch this in two D because we don't like three D films. But I think either it was book solid or, or the timing was just wasn't right for us. We we were forced to buy three D tickets. Coughed up the cash That's for it. Right. Mm. Kirby can't even use the 3D glasses. So you were just watching it in like, it was mostly like a blur for you, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it, it wasn't that bad. I'm pretty good at seeing uh, stuff that's blurry. But it, it was not... Either the year before I saw Inside Out. Let's just say this does not look at, as good as Inside Out when I saw it for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I remember I was... Um, random, what would you experience first? I saw the movie twice, actually. I saw it with you guys, and... Spoilers, we all didn't enjoy our first viewing. No. Seeing Finding Dory. It was... There was something about it I, that we just did not like. And that's because I was... For me, it was because I was constantly comparing it to the original. And I was just... And I was just hating on it. Like, I thought it was... Annoying. I thought some of the characters who were lovable were annoying this time around. I thought some of it was dull. I thought some of it wasn't funny. And I just was in a bitter mood. And I'm not sure why. And now that I look back on it. But it's funny because my good old mama bystander here was like, I want to see Finding Dory. And I'm like, "Mm, fine. (laughs) So I took her to see it. And we both saw it again. Well, she saw it for the first time. I saw it again. And the funny thing was, I actually liked it better the second time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why. I, I, first off, we didn't see it in 3D. So that was, that was good. It was a lot cheaper. Second, it was in a theater that wasn't crowded. And third, I don't know. It was just something about the second viewing just made it better. For me, and I think I know why, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay. Also, I may be crazy because I don't know how these two feel about <laughs> finding Dory after watching it again. But well, well I mean, re- regardless of what we feel, you might still be crazy. Just yeah, I mean, know. I'm I'm just crazy in general. Kobe, do you want to add anything with that? 
<laughs> like, <laughs> Wash said Kirby and then random went, actually. <laughs> no, I was thinking Kirby fan usually should go last. So, uh, not, not for this. <laughs> not for this? For okay. The, for specifically, specifically the first viewing, Wash goes last. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was Yeah, bad. Wash got... Yeah, watch. He, he, he got he got he got hard cucked. So yeah, you go ahead, Kirby fan. So I will go. Um, I'll I'll say out of the three of us, I probably um had the best viewing experience just because a lot of the issues that a lot of us had affected me the least. I especially remember, um, random was kind of not not he wasn't exhausted, but he was kind of tired, and the seats in the theater were changed to be a lot more comfortable and they were leaned back more and you could put your feet up and stuff. And he really didn't like that throughout the whole movie. He felt sleepy because of how Oh my god, I think I were... fell asleep during half part of the movie. You might you might have. You might have. I forget um, why I was so tired, but I was so tired. Yeah, it was it was yeah, I don't know why you were tired, but the seats did not help. Um I was not tired. I just thought the seats were comfortable. Um the three D was annoying, but uh when Toy Story three came out uh, that was in 3D and I didn't wear the glasses because frick that <laughs> so it was my first time seeing a uh, movie in 3D without the glasses so I, I dealt with it fine um, I did not have any of the problems that Watch had <laughs> so I, I not to say that it was a good experience but I definitely had the least bad <laughs> is the nicest way I'm going to put it experience out of all of us however that was not reflective of my opinions of the movie because when we first saw it Oh, I did not like it. Random didn't like it, and Wash, as you'll soon hear, didn't know what to think. Um, I yeah, didn't I like it at all. I really... I was about to say, yeah, out of all the people, you hated it the most, I think. I, I hated it. I don't... I, re- I really don't hate a lot of things. Like As far as Pixar goes, it's really just Cars 2 and A Bug's Life. Everything else I can, I could take or leave, worst case. But oh, Fighting Dory, when I first saw it, man, oh, just... Complaint after complaint with only a handful of things that I liked about it. it was, mm. ugh. And then I never saw it again until yesterday. Well, uh, whenever I watched it. <laughs> but I did not see it again until uh, watching it for the Pixar perspective. Uh, was it the same experience? Was it different? We'll get to that. When we get to that. <laughs> Wash. I love this slider. I still love this thing. Oh my Wash. God. Now it's time for your Coupe de Grave a theater experience yes. with this. Go, go, go. Go. Okay. So, this is a primer here. Um, uh, I, the Wash, have a uh, hearing disability. Uh, so, I need to wear hearing aids. And whenever I go out to the, to the theaters or when I uh, watch something uh, at home, I need to be supplied with uh, English subtitles. Uh, along the way, or or closed captions, or what have you. Uh, so the theater, I I want to say like part of it might might is it probably like part of the problem with with the construction. But when we went over there, um, we were getting set up, and I and I got the uh, the closed captioning device, which is like a little uh, it's like a little thing you can put in the cup holders, and you can adjust it in, uh, in front of you, and it's it's it's, it's pretty neat. And the the, the trailer started playing. And I noticed that the uh, closed captions weren't working. So I got concerned and I got up and I went over and I checked with them and said, Oh no, just wait for the, for the, for the film to start. Uh, so I was okay. So I, I go back and the uh, animated short that came before this, Piper, started. And um, even though there were no words, it was still supposed to be displaying the sound effects. And it wasn't. So I went over there. And I said, no, no, I'll wait for the film to start. I said, okay. So we got to the film. And it was still not working. And it was getting really aggravating. And so at a certain point, I had to get up, go back there, and explain to them, no, the film is currently playing. Nothing's coming out of this. So it was. It ended up being like a back and forth where I was walking back to the to the theater for a bit, waiting for them, then walking uh, back out, uh, talking with um, with one of the employees, and um, and then and eventually what what it uh, turned out was the whatever whatever it is, the machine that that um, that's supposed to connect and and um, broadcast the closed captions. Nope, uh, kaput. 
It, what, it, it just wasn't working for today. Uh, best they could do was give me, um, give me a voucher for future movie tickets. And I was just supposed to like just go back in the theater and just try to... And, and, and keep in mind, all of this happened over the span of, I want to say like 25, maybe a half hour. And so the, the first chunk of the movie, I completely missed. And it wasn't until we went, uh, we went home and discussed it that I started uh, finding out some things that I, just, that I just didn't see, which we'll get to. Um, and good lord, it was just frustrating to say the least because the 3D glasses were, were, were making everything darker. The seats were way up to the theater, so everything was just kind of warped for me, like in terms of the perspective. And on top of all that, I can't understand what they're saying. And there's like, there are characters with like British accents in this, and I don't know what they're saying. It, it was such, such a frustrating experience, and so because I, I just missed out on so much of the dialogue, my first impressions were, I don't know. I couldn't say whether I liked it or uh, whether I didn't like it because I couldn't hear the majority of it. All I could say was, it was too dark in the 3D glasses. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was rough. The, that yeah. sucked. Uh, some months later, it, it just happened to be it uh, show up on Netflix. And so I ended up watching it again. And, and this time I actually saw the intro and everything with the uh, subtitles. And I ended up yeah, having... Yeah, you got to see two Pixar movies in a single year. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 that, so, that was so not forced at all. Hey! Hey! Um, hey! Um, I was watching it on Netflix, and I ended up with the same experience that Random had, which was, I liked it. I still had some uh, a lot of issues with it, um, which we'll get to. But I I enjoyed my myself a lot more the second uh, the second time around, and I think I enjoyed it a little more the third time around. But we'll get to that. Hey, maybe if you watch it 20 more times, you'll like it more than the other films. <laughs> it's, it's, it's... All right. Well, uh, who's up for uh, plot synopsis? It's not me because I already talked for like four minutes. Um, so by default, that means it's you, Anna. <laughs> I have already done a lot of plot synopsis. We'll fine, 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 fine. But I'm not doing Cars 3. So <laughs> basically, it takes place with Baby Dory and Baby Dory... And we see her with her parents who one of them is voiced by Eugene Levy mm -hmm. interesting and then it do we see a lot of flashbacks going back and forth to that parent scene and we get to see Dory and how she was lost by her from her parents and basically lived on her own throughout most of her life and then it then eventually we see baby Dory become grown-up Dory voiced by Ellen DeGeneres again reprising her role of course um, and then we see her bump into Marlin and they do the scene where they meet in Finding Nemo. And then it cuts back to like, what? What was the time gap again? Uh, I, I want to say between Nemo and Dory one year. One year later. Yeah. A year later. And Dory's living with Nemo and Marlin and she's her forgetful self. And at one point she's with Mr. Ray and... She remembers something about her family when she gets swept away by the undertow. And she remembers they're at the Jewel of the Mall Bay. Jewel of. Oh, God. Jewel I, of Mora Bay, California. Ju that. that. And she, ha she goes on a quest across the ocean again to find her parents. Mm -hmm. Because of this, she winds up getting soda cans stuck on her. And she gets swept up by the marine biology center into quarantine. And that's where her parents are. So basically, her and this octopus, a septopus, uh, <laughs> named Hank, uh, must work together in order to find Dory's parents. Meanwhile, Nemo and Marlin are working together in order to find Dory. Yep. And it's a comedy. And it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it sure it's is. It's a full blown comedy. <laughs> Beautiful. Good to uh, Thank you. Um, can I just say, I don't know if I want to say this right off the bat. Oh boy. 
I think the reason I disliked it so much in the beginning is was I could, kept comparing it to Finding Nemo. Mm. Which is understandable. It's a yeah, fair. Uh, I think I part of the definitely part of the reason that I didn't like it my first time was because I was comparing it to Nemo. And um, uh, Finding Nemo is is a great movie, but it has a serious tone to it almost. This yeah. film, and uh, and also like like Finding Nemo, it's like it's like top five for all of us. Like it is yeah, a it's, incredibly good film. Yeah, it's my it's yeah it's a, yeah top. It's incredibly good. It's such a high bar. But this film has a totally different tone to it. <laughs> yeah, it and unlike, unlike, um, say, something like Monsters University or Cars 2, which is so far detached from the prequel, it's, come on. This one is more of a, oh, okay, they were going for something different because Dory's a different character from Marlon, and I can appreciate that. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed for second around, second time watching, I'm like, okay... So what if it's it's not Finding Nemo? It's a, it's not supposed to be Finding Nemo too. Yeah. The no. reason why Toy Story three being a sequel, for example, bothered me so much was just because it's not that you had to see one and two in order to enjoy it. It's really just that you had to know one and two. Um, Finding Dory, yeah, there's you know a lot to appreciate if you watch Finding Nemo, but I, I think it works on its own without relying too much on Finding Nemo. Even then, they kind of give you some little hints or, like, granted, they're just more remember whens than anything, but they, they, they bring you up to speed. Like, remember when we fought those sharks? Yeah. The three sh- rem- I thought it was three sharks. No, three sharks. no it was four. four. I'm the one who traveled the ocean. <laughs> it, so there are cute moments like that. So you're not totally lost yeah. in this film. Yeah, and they're brought into the good. script very naturally. It's not... It's- uh, I know this is an awkward topic for us to bring up, but it's not Toy Story 3. <laughs> I think uh, the the Dory aspect, um, uh, with, and I'll and I'll explain more what I mean by by this. But like, I think the Dory aspect worked the best uh, on its own. The Marlin and Nemo stuff, uh, I have my, I have my issues with to say the yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get to the, it's we'll get to that when we get to that. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we sh- we should talk about Dory, though. Yeah, yeah let's it's, talk about Dory. It's, Dory it's, was... fu- it's funny that we we finally get to because I remember in the in Toy Story three, like um, we had to skip the most of the main cast um, just because there just there wasn't much to talk about that we hadn't discussed in the previous uh, two films. But this time around, no, there's actually quite a lot to uh, to to get into with with Dory. Yeah, she for yeah, and not just with her being the main character. She's actually really well developed in this. Yeah. Um, so, so far in the podcast, we've done a very good job of avoiding this cursed sentence, but I'm going to bring the cursed sentence to the podcast. I'm sorry, but, uh, one, it's a complaint that I had with pretty much every, uh, sequel movie so far, barring Toy Story 2, but I've avoided saying it just because, like I said, I really didn't want to bring it up. But, uh, a question I asked going into Finding Dory, most, mostly just because I didn't like it on my first time. I was asking myself, okay, going into this movie, number one question, why does this exist? Yes. And Finding Dory actually has a very good reason to exist if you think about it. Yeah. Because Dory is a very important character in Finding Nemo, but just looking at Finding Nemo, like, what do we know about Dory? Yeah. She has short-term memory loss. She's fun. She's supportive. She's a great friend of Marlon. And these are all great character traits. I still love Dory in Finding Nemo. But you look at Marlon and Nemo, their backstories, their conflicts and everything, they're very strongly developed. Yeah. And you see Dory... And the only thing you really get is, where are they? Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. Which he is hilarious, don't get me wrong. But yeah, it's hilarious. Getting... And they reference that in the beginning, literally, yeah. of Can Finding Dory. Literally, word for word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, callbacks like that are, are cute. If, if the movie was worse, I'd probably compare them more to Toy Story 3. But as is, because the movie's not too disingenuous, I'll put it. Uh, they, they were cute. But... Mm. So it was really nice actually getting to learn a lot more about Dory. It was, and I will say, I think it is a valid reason for this movie to exist. It has purpose. I know yeah. that Andrew Stanton, the director, uh, Disney was approaching him about a, a, a Finding Nemo 2. Um, 
And, and first off, like, Disney tried to do their own Finding Nemo 2 as a direct-to-DVD, part of the Circle 7 fiasco. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, fucking Michael Heisner again. As far as I know, as far as we know, there's just this nothing we can we can work off. I can't really find much on the uh, Finding Nemo 2, the original concept, so I can't say uh, anything about this. Um, I will say... Um, I understand the Disney approached him uh, about doing a sequel and he answered what's your timeline I, I only want us to do one when there's like a really solid idea and I don't like if you tell me three years I don't know if there's gonna be a good idea in three years so um, he started mulling on this and coincidentally Disney decided to re-release Finding Nemo in 3D so Andrew Stanton got to uh, work through it, and he says he does he he doesn't normally rewatch his own films just because he's had to like watch these films over and over and over again as he directs. So coming back to Finding Nemo, he st- he started like mulling a lot on Dory, and he says the exact same thing that you said. That's like, what do we know about Dory? What can we explore about Dory? And he and uh, the screenwriter uh, Victoria Strauss. Uh, ended up like that was what they were attempting to solve. Like, um, like what do we know about Dory? And how do you write a character who who keeps forgetting her motivation? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it is it it is quite remarkable to to watch through and just see like we take memories so for granted, and it's and it's just not we're just not used to a character having to constantly, a protagonist, having to constantly remember what their goal is. And they did a really, really good job in that front. Uh, especially you know with- what I love about that specific aspect? The way Dory remembers isn't somebody saying, oh, Dory, don't you remember? <laughs> it's, it's these little happenstance moments. Yeah. Someone will say something that triggers a memory. And that is perfect either that or sometimes she'll just come to a logical conclusion on her own yeah Yeah. and just her line of thought will also trigger the memory and that is perfect (laughs) it's accurate yes that happens all the time in everyday life that happens to all of us (laughs) it's very relatable but imagine imagine having to do that like every minute of your life yeah oh god yeah and that's and that's what leads to dory and it's it, this is this is a story that you can only <laughs> this is a story that you can only tell with Dory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, and it works. It kind of this is me maybe looking a bit too deep in the film, but this maybe is like an allegory of those with like somewhat mental disabilities, almost who are like struggling with these sort of things. No, I I, I could absolutely see that comparison. Yeah, yeah, especially when Dory has a lot of her more panicky moments. Oh definitely. my god! Yeah, I love. We'll we'll talk about that later, but I love that so much. It do- I mean, I mean I, I, you're probably I think what you're specifically talking about is something a little later into the film but <laughs> yeah. even before that there are a lot of moments where Dory's just saying oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I messed this up I'm sorry oh Nemo is he okay oh sorry did I already say something oh, oh I'm sorry I'm so sorry like uh, that I'm just mad because that leads me to that's close to my least favorite line in the film <laughs> oh my god i know exactly which one you're talking i, about. I know what you're oh talking about but god. let's save that a bit because we we'll still save have that to, for later we still have to talk later. about the opening yeah well yeah i oh one more god. thing about Do- one we more thing i want to say about dory Do- already hold on hold on i want to say something about regular dory okay. can i just say out of all the sequels about pixar sidekicks this is the best from the microcosm of like how they approach the secondary character, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and this is definitely the best film in that subcategory. <laughs> that subcategory. <laughs> the reason why I'm pretty comfortable also saying that I like Dory in this film more than I like Wazowski in Monsters U, it really just boils down to the fact that, you know, Dory I know this is just a me thing. I know you two really enjoy Monsters U, but I didn't. <laughs> so actually seeing Dory in, you know, a movie that I could watch. Spoilers. Seeing Dory in a movie that I could actually say, oh, hey, I like this. This is a good movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was nice. And also yeah. the fact that Dory, you know, when Dory was punished, it was actually used for dramatic effect and not just, hey, let's make Mike Krasowski's life a living hell just because. Mm. <sighs> just because Bully said so. There's no the Bully said so. Uh, again, also, there's no real villain in this either. <laughs> yes, yeah. great thing to take from Finding Nemo. There's no villain here. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. 
you would you you th- there's one character who you think is going to be a twist villain but he actually winds up being a main really main character and one of the clo- closest characters to Dory mind you yeah and probably and yeah, exactly. possibly like one of the best like uh characters introduced in the overall franchise yeah finding yeah. Nemo definitely yeah because finding Nemo had a lot of characters in it and nine out of time nine times out of ten they were really good but finding Nemo was a kind of uh Wash brought this up with Good Dinosaur. It wasn't about, for Finding Nemo, it wasn't about developing the characters. It was about meeting all of the different species in this vast, giant ocean <laughs> and how they helped Marlin on his journey to Nemo. Yeah. That's what Finding Nemo was about. Dory isn't so much about that. So you could get a character like, we're just going to name drop him, a character like Hank, where you can, uh, you can develop him and he can turn out really good. Yeah. And I think he did. Oh, yeah. yeah. He grew almost as much as Dory did. Exactly. I really liked when um they thought they were going to say goodbye to each other for good. And, uh, you know, he's Hank was saying, you know, I'm going to miss you. And Dory said, I'm not going to forget you. I don't, I don't think I'll forget you or something like that. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to no, remember. He says, I'm going to remember you. And, and Hank says, oh, you'll, for, you'll forget me in a heartbeat. Three heartbeats. But to tell you through it, I don't think I'm going to forget you. Oh, it was it was a nice moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I all really right. love all that. Um, it's very but unfortunately, nice. Unfortunately, it's time. It's, are we gonna have to talk about Baby Doy? We are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's what's so frustrating is that, Tell me when you're done. <laughs> what, what's so frustrating about this is that Baby Doy is not just it's not a, an opening thing. It's a continuous thing. Yes, I know. All throughout the movie. All throughout the movie. Fair. I get it. I get that she has to be there, but did you have to make her look like that? I, I mean, okay. Uh, I could. Yeah. Uh, my tiny defense of that is that is what baby fish look like. But also, you <laughs> very did clear, her eyes have to be like that. Uh, also, you very did clearly wanted to, to sell be toys. Like that? Did she have to be baby Dory? Oh, God. I don't even like the performance that much. Like, like it's not That's a, so it's not like a Pete Doctor thing where where he really gets some go- some good performance out of child actors. Like, like here it's just there, there were some parts that you could tell were, were like like kid stuff, and there were some parts that you could really tell was her trying to phonetically read out lines. Yeah. Do you remember in the opening when her parents were uh, telling her? About the undertow rhyme, and she said, "Oh, I forgot the rhyme." And they were trying to tell her, "No, no, it's okay." And then she said, "Are you gonna forget me?" <laughs> like, where did that come from? Where did this come from? <laughs> or when she said, "I forgot the rhyme." Am I gonna forget you? Are you gonna forget me? It's like how many th- things did we just jump over? <laughs> Lots of different drafts. I laughed. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at this. This is a serious moment. Why am I laughing? Because it was it's uh, rhetorical. And eh, I it wouldn't be so bad if she wasn't in the film constantly. This was um if, if I I don't know, I feel like I might have brought this up when we we're talking about Finding Nemo, but the original concept with uh, Finding Nemo, uh, one of the how it was originally going to be set up was that um, Coral's death was going to be set up in flashback over the film. Like they they would uh, have a bit of the film, then they would cut to um, to uh, Marlin and Coral. Um, and then you start to see the backstory, you start to see them slowly become parents, and the issue, uh, became, um, one, it was, it was just kind of hard to, like, keep the flow going, and two, um, it, it made Marlin look more insufferable. It made Marlin yeah. look like a, like a bad guy, because you don't see his backstory, and you don't see that, like, he genuinely cares, he's just incredibly scared, we don't have that problem, thankfully, with Dory. Yeah, I think it, the flashbacks work. Yeah, because she's remembering it over time. Yeah, Dory. Dory is a different character for Marlin. Yeah, flashbacks yeah. work for Dory because <laughs> Marlin was not insufferable. I'm not trying to say this, but on that line of thought, it works for Dory because Dory is not insufferable. <laughs> not only that, but she's slowly remembering bits and pieces of her memories with her parents yeah. over time. Yeah, so it makes sense that they'll just randomly that's a, come yeah. out. Yeah, that's another big thing. She's remembering things. She's not. It's not for the viewer. It's for Dory. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes, sometimes baby Dory does get a little annoying, and the parents may be a little bit bland. We'll I'll get admit to that. that. But I think the flashbacks really do help with the film. I, I think they, they they work in a story standpoint. The the 
it's it's not as good as the the sum of its parts, unfortunately. Yeah, mostly Which because so its parts because are not the concept is great and the execution on it is really good. It's just baby Dory. <laughs> it's baby Dory. Uh, I can take, and I can take the bland parents having. Having the parents be bland, I can live with that fine. But, oh my god, baby Dory. And, and it's like every single time you cut to it is, I get why it happened. Because every, uh, each time it's, it goes to, like, uh, Dory remembers something and then she spins around and becomes her, her baby self. It's just, but that means that every single time you come back to a flashback, you, come, you get to a close-up of baby Dory. <laughs> How many toys they sold? Millions! There was just so many giant eyeballs staring in the Toys R Us that are rest in peace toys. I'm R's. thinking of a baby Marlin. Oh. Uh. Marlin's face, but with the giant eyes. <laughs> that's in, that's in uh, Finding Nemo 3 where they all turn into babies. Baby <laughs> Nemo. Finding Marlin. <laughs> okay, um, okay, all right. Uh, okay, okay tangent, all right. Really quick tangent. <laughs> Did Dory ever, ever say the word Marlin in Finding Nemo? Because she's, she name drops him in this movie, and it, was, it really made me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know, I but don't... she does call Nemo's name right. Yeah, and that, okay, so that makes perfect sense, and from a story perspective, I'd even go as far to say it's a really good thing, but it made me so sad. <laughs> I yeah I admit I missed it. I love that that running gag and finding even it was the end of the movie and she still can't get his name right. I love that. It was so funny. <laughs> I I I will give some uh, a little bit of props to the. It was a very short uh, running gag, but it was very similar where um she couldn't remember she couldn't even remember the phrase open ocean, so she kept saying like soap and lotion or locomotion. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, especially like the way the the two ca- the, the the two characters which, who we'll get to soon um like immediately said. <laughs> Say open ocean. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I found I found that really funny, and I'm a fan of the word play. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Again, the comedy is on point with this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It really, really makes me laugh at points. Back to regular Dory. Right. Yes. But, uh, well, yeah. Regular back to regular Dory. But then, uh, go like going into that uh, opening. Um, we got to the whole thing about the substitute teacher, and uh, she helps out Mr. Ray, uh, uh, voice points again by Bob Peterson. Oh god, that the, that chorus of Manta Rays was amazing. <laughs> oh, that was really nice. I, I liked how that played <laughs> off. It, it, it works even if you haven't seen the first one, because you can already see that Mr. Ray, he's a thinker. Yeah. And you know what? So is everybody else. <laughs> and... Not only that is it a beautiful sight to see, but it actually leads up with the plot with getting like Dory getting sucked up in the undertow. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, unfortunately, what what that leads to? Yeah, the moment that it leads to. Can I talk about that for a second? Are you talking about that crazy edit? <laughs> I, so when I, I can get... when when Dory wakes up and all the students in the class are talking to her, and then she says something, and then there's Marlin. <laughs> no, literally, it's like. I remember something, something important, and then immediately and then it's Marlin. cuts to Marlin going I, something I important. I rewound, I rewound. I was on that scene, I'm not lying, that one line, the Dory, Dory waking up to Marlin, five minutes. I just, hunted for Marlin. He's not there. <laughs> <laughs> he just ran him. It's just such a weird transition. There's a I'm reason not gonna for lie. that. I'm not going to lie. I definitely think this movie's better, but that made me laugh in a way that good dinosaur made me laugh. <laughs> I found this out through the Blu-ray that there is a there was an actual reason why it happened like that. It was because that wasn't what the opening was supposed to be. The opening was supposed to be, if you remember the original teaser trailer where um where, where Dory is like sleep talking to herself and it was what was gonna happen was she was gonna start sleep swimming. And and like just start swimming through and um and Marlon and Nemo would follow after and she would start saying things. Um, like Jewel, uh, Jewel of Moore Bay, California, and then she would wake up and says, "I just remember it's, uh, something important, something important." But uh, Andrew Stanton didn't like that uh, so much, so they changed it to the teacher assistant thing. Unfortunately, they kept that line there. <laughs> I'm sorry. As soon as she said that, I just started bursting out laughing. <laughs> I just, as soon as the edit happened, that's where I died. I was like, what the? 
That's like an edit I would make. <laughs> you're catching you're catching my life breakdown. <laughs> It was so bad. How do you? I can't tell if it was something that they. they there's no way they didn't catch that. I. They have I to think be that they were, like, were just it's stuck. Funny. <clears throat> oh my god. <clears throat> oh god. It made me laugh with how terrible of an edit that was. It, was it really so did. Funny. It was so funny, guys. It, it's just. Th it just threw me off. I was like, it's, it's so out of nowhere. <laughs> Think about it again. <laughs> God damn! It was oh my oh god. god. It just random Marlin just popping up like something important. What happened? <laughs> like were this you is, there the entire? Time? Remembering this is what we remember Marlin for, guys. Not not anything that happened in Finding <laughs> Nemo. He just randomly pops up in edits. <laughs> oh my god! He was. That was probably the, be the the best uh, Marlin thing to Marlin thing to really happen in the whole uh, movie. No. Whoa. No. I'm, no. Whoa. Don't. You showed me something on Discord. I will not forget. Ooh. 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 Made ooh. Me laugh. Ooh. 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 That made me laugh ooh. so hard, but ooh. not for the reasons I wanted it to. See, I remember, I remember seeing that shortly after we saw the film, but I forgot about it. <laughs> I, 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 I had that idea a long time ago, but it was only when I started watching it again when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna spend five minutes making that joke. <laughs> it's so good. But then they decide to go on another quest, which is, which is, which originally Marlin is hesitant to, which. At first, I was kind of annoyed at him when I first saw it, but now it makes sense. He it already really risked does. His, he risked his son's life once. Why is he going to do it again? <laughs> yeah, all for, all for somebody who's probably not even going to remember why she wants to do it in the first place. Yeah, but eventually yeah. Dory twists. Dory convinces him, and he's like, "Yeah, I, I, well, I understand. I've been so, there." So okay, Dory and Nemo convince him. Yeah. Yeah, Nemo yeah. is really on Dory's side a lot of the time. Yeah, which is which is nice. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's just that there was nothing else to Nemo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do do uh, we want to get to these two now? Yeah, let's get to them. Yeah, Marlin and Nemo. They were. They're not. They're not the. They're not too bad, but they're not the best. I didn't. They I've... are not. They are not the worst thing about the movie. They are my least favorite part of the movie. I, I that is that yes. I, I I love the way you put that because I will say that um, uh, Albert Brooks he had some really funny lines in there, like the the scene we're mentioning uh, where it's like. How come every time we're on the edge of this reef, one of us is trying to leave? For once, can't we just enjoy the view? Yeah, <laughs> not only that's funny, but the it pays the off movie, later. They're just enjoying that. the view together. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice way to end it, but and just funny. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Albert Brooks does have some funny lines in this. They actually use his comedy, and that kind of makes it memorable. Granted, it's not always work. Does not all? Yeah, it doesn't always work, but it's still. There's moments that make me laugh, even if some stupid, even if something stupid, like him going uru. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uru is definitely the best part of the movie. Oh yeah, but, without a doubt. Um, but my my problem is is just they both Marlin and Nemo. I really think about it, and they don't do anything. Me, they Why don't. are they here? So. They don't contribute anything. Nothing. Yeah, it's like Lightning. It they're like Lightning so McQueen in Cars too. He's just yeah. There. Uh, the only thing that they that I, I was I was going through and like the only thing that Marlon really contributes uh, for this was I guess you can also say that the, he got well yeah he got this idea from Nemo and then Nemo said it to Dory was um, he ended up saying what would Dory do and that pays off later on when um, when spoilers Dory has like a she, she has a breakdown she loses she loses everything. And the only things you can really work off is what would Dory do? The problem is that like nothing else <laughs> was. It's that. just a and B even plot. that's kind of a. Str uh, you're right, but it's also it's a, a stress. stress. Yeah, trust me. No, that's a huge stress, and 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 it's like it's something that any other character could have easily done. Yeah, honestly, it's exactly. I mean, yeah. some comedic moments were okay between them. I was more forgiving about them personally, just because the movie got me in a laughing mood. <laughs> if if there weren't, this is the, um when I get to my final thoughts, I'm gonna get back to this. But if there wasn't so much of the movie that was devoted to Marlon and Nemo not contributing anything, they're just there. Then I don't think I would have too much of a problem with it. But 
there's a good chunk more than I remember of Marlon and Nemo being in this movie. And yeah, they really don't contribute anything. And, and not only that, but I thought when I was thinking back to it, like what's the whole plot? Like once they uh, separate uh, from Dory, the the they go to the seals, they get inside Becky's bucket, then they get left uh, left uh, alone by Becky, then they go through the the um the the fountains, and then they land in the tide pool, and then they they're back with with Dory. I yeah. just I just explained the entire plot that they just went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you right saved in. about 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah pretty and, and much. It's like, it takes so long, and it's just like, it, it's like every time it cuts back to them, it's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, and it's, it's like, it's, I'm there for the uwu, but there's just nothing else to them. <laughs> I will admit, Becky does pay off at one point later, and a, and, a, and again, uru is a funny moment that comes back at the end. <laughs> Becky! Does he even... Becky pays off better than Marlon and Nemo. Yeah, she does. Yes. What? Becky Uru Uru. <laughs> Find Dory Uru. <laughs> fun fact: uh, Becky is voiced by the uh, same person, same person as Gerald the the um, the sea lion, the the one with the monobrow. Oh God. Torben I don't know Zan- why that made me laugh, but it did. <laughs> Torben Zan Bullock is the name of the of the actor, and turns out he's just somebody who works in the in the editing department, and they just they just put him in as <laughs> Gerald and Beck. You know, honestly, I don't know why the the sea lions made me laugh, but they did. I, I like them. They didn't really make me laugh, but I just really appreciated how laid back they were. Yeah, yeah and, it's, and like, it's, except it's when so- Gerald got on the rock. That's, yeah. that's I like I like when they were leaving the rock to go. So I don't remember what it was that they, they left. And he Did went on the let- rock, and they were saying, "Don't get used to it. Don't get used to being on a rock." <laughs> Basically, that was during the whole co- the whole chase scene, which. Jesus Christ! But by the way, why that. did they? I, the, the only reason they they like left that rock in the first place was for a joke. Like they don't pay off in any other way. No, they're just kind of there. They're kind of there to just tell Nemo and Dory, Nemo and uh, Marlin what to do. Yeah, and it's like you have like <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of funny thing about it. Like you have like world class actors, Idris Elba and Dominic West. Like these are these are like. Like like Shakespearean style uh, actors, and they're just they're just like really lazy ass seals who just keeps it. Oh 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 oh! All right, I do like that timing where they'll just get angry at Gerald and then immediately be like, "Yeah, it's fine." <laughs> um, I mean, no, no, I, I want that. No, it's it's still funny. I still enjoyed it a lot. I I they didn't do anything in terms of the. Beyond uh, getting Becky in, they didn't do uh, much in terms of story. But much like how Kirby still loved Doug, even though he was was making everything worse, I still love this, the the sea lions, even though they didn't do much of anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah same here, same here. <laughs> I the, I love a lot of the comedic elements in this, yeah. but the they, but I agree with you with Marlin and Nemo not exactly being needed other than the fact that they were just in the movie last time and, <laughs> and it's such a story. shame too yeah because uh, the only defining trait of nemo is making marlin feel bad <laughs> yeah gone are all the character traits he had in finding nemo he literally just exists to say what would dory do oh i and to remind marlin of that stupid line he made which do we do we want to talk about that now let's talk oh, about that line god worst, that line worst okay, line first, of the whole movie first off they get chased by a giant squid which looked really cool, by the way. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like... I mean, it kind of looks like a creature from Spore, only better. But <laughs> I mean, that's what a squid is. <laughs> it's like it's, it's almost like an alien underwater. Yeah. But it's weird because you see a septopus later, and he's just chill. But <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Um, but it gets to a point where like Nemo gets in life-threatening danger. So you can kind of see... Where Marlin's going, but he kind of went out of line by saying to Dory, who feels bad, turns around, re- forgets how she feels bad, but feels bad again nonetheless. And one point where Marlin goes, why don't you just go there? Go wait and forget. It's what you do best. And it's like, oh. It's so forced. It's, it's, and it's, like the whole thing is that they're, 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 they're getting chased away and they bump into a pole and it hurts Nemo and Marlin is mad at Dory for that. For, okay. And then she's just, he just like dropped that line 
It's even so flabbergasting that the character himself doesn't even realize he said he really, yeah they literally yeah. have to be like I, I literally said that <laughs> it's funny because it's bad yeah. it's, because he's it's, incredulous at the writers who writes this guy's stuff <laughs> it's so so bad it's like it's, it's such a regression of his character too yeah feels, that's a very good way if, of putting it it reminds me so much my father would be still alive because if it weren't for you it reminds me so much of that <sighs> There's my good dinosaur quota. They're still happening. Even Come though- on, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta still get the. We still gotta do the good dinosaur quota, even though it's even though it's done. <laughs> I've been I've, I've been getting Bugs Life quotas long after we saw the movie, so don't yeah, worry. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just I hate that line. It just feels like screenwriters wrote that line. And to be fair. Uh, no, not to be fair. And just to point out, some writing moments feel like they are there just because Save the Cat said so. Yeah. There, there, there's some of that, yeah. It's, un- it's rather unfortunate. It's just, there's, there's, just some, there's some parts where you can very easily just, like, cut that down. You really didn't need that. Yeah. Thankfully, Marlin and Nemo are B-plot, a very significant part of the B-plot. But not the main plot. Mm. It actually focuses on Dory and new character, who we've kind of mentioned already, Ooh. Hank. Hank, played by uh, Ed O'Neill from uh, Married with Children and Modern Family. Modern Family? Knocked it out of the goddamn park with this. Not only, oh my God. Not only in terms of comedy, but in terms of, like, some, some real, like... Some real good soul stories in here too. Like, you- oh my God, yes, I loved his character so much. I- Arguably more than Dory. <sighs> it definitely, uh, I, definitely. I, don't know like- about that. I agree that I really liked him, but I, I don't know if I would put him above Dory. At least when it comes to comedy, I like. Okay, him okay, that's Dory. that's that's fair. I I would say that like I mean it's it's, it's not really fair because they're based in uh, the the designs off the ocean, but best designed character. Like oh the, yeah, they I I in the it turns out in the blue and as you find out in the blue rays they had a whole team dedicated solely to Hank because he was just that complicated of a character design that you have and and I love all the like n- not only like the how how well they like uh like animate and render him but but like how well they they like set up like shots for him where there, there's a lot of shots where you don't see his mouth. And he still had some great emotion uh, working off of it. Oh, when he, yeah. When he left the theater on the first viewing, I didn't know if he had a mouth or not. So I made sure to keep my eyes open for that. And sure enough, oh, my God, he actually has a mouth. <laughs> you see it more in the ending. Oh, yeah. The ending was not not a complaint. But in the uh, in the ending, it was obvious. It was there in yeah. plain sight. Uh, I like how he's originally kind of tries to trick Dory, which is not hard, especially <laughs> when he finds out the short-term memory loss. And he's like, what were we talking about? Um, you were giving my tag. And you think he's going to be like, oh, we're just going to twist. You're just going to be evil. And she's like, why? I kind of like the tag. I'm like, mm. <laughs> he actually gets honest with her right off the bat. He's just, I want to go to Cleveland. <laughs> I, I don't want to be in the ocean. I hate it. Yeah, I want to be in a self-contained space alone. Yeah, yeah, he had bad memories, and 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 it's a good contrast against it. Not only in in like his his uh, it's a it's a very similar uh, pair up with uh with um Carl and Russell. You have like someone who's who's kind of cranky versus the uh, happy go lucky, but but also like that line is a good like counterbalance to what Dory is after, which is she has she has only her memories, and even then it's fleeting. Yeah. She, she doesn't have bad memories because she doesn't have memories, to, uh, to be frank. But she's just taking it uh, a day at a time. And she, she, she does some really good, like, sort of takedowns of, uh, of Hank's, like, nihilism. And it's really... Yeah. It's really, really good. And it's, it's really It's refreshing fun. to see Dory get angry. Yeah. yeah. And, and I especially love how they, uh, they, they set it up to where, where if this were, like, uh, humans, like, uh, like Dory would be right up against her, her grill. But because of the, the setup, she, they, they physically can't do that. So instead, they, they make the, the baby carriage that they're both in part of that scene where, where she's, like, grilling down as they're, like, careening down a hill. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck, what have I done? It's so great. And then it, like, leads. 
And I, I don't know. They just work well with each other. They really, really do. And they complement each other, one another. And it gets to the point where, like, Dory changes Hank to the point where he doesn't really want to be alone anymore. I mean, he has the tag, sure, but there's one point. It is well. First off, camouflage is great. Yeah. It's nice to see what they do is with. It's nice to see a Randall with used potential. Yeah, I was just going to make that comparison. Because <laughs> Randall, they just use it as like, oh, it's the villain, meh. But with 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 uh, with Hank, they use it so much. They use it so much to their advantage. Like, he hides from people so much. And do do you hides- remember that scene? I, I bought it up in the Monsters, Inc. episode because I thought it was so cool. When Mike was running away from Randall, yeah. he, he thinks he's escaped. And then there's a painting of water noose behind him. Yeah. And then you see Randall's eyes, and then, oh my god, it's Randall. There's a whole scene devoted to stuff like that, when he's trying to hide from humans. And, oh and like, god. his introduction is that he comes out of a of a cat poster yeah, that says hang in there. He comes out of a cat poster. Like, a realistic one, no less. Yeah, and then you see, right before that is a stupid joke. Looks like we're done here today. Come on, you're a scientist. Get get your act together. <laughs> what? It was funny. <laughs> it was really funny. I like that. That's... That, There's that's a lot you, of dumb little humor. No, no, like no. That. that that guy is Wash. It was it made him laugh. Therefore, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's harsh but true. <laughs> oh my god. There's there's more I want to say about Hank. I just don't know what. There's even a visual gag where um Nemo and Marlin see what looks like Dory on. Like in a tank in Cleveland, but no, it's just Hank missing Dory. Aww, <laughs> it's yeah. so sweet and funny at the same time. <laughs> he, he uses his tentacles to create a, uh, a Dory to swim around in. It's like, aww, he misses like, her. They're like good friends. Speaking of good friends, so glad they did this. I did glad they did this in Finding Nemo, and I'm so I was afraid they weren't going to do this in Finding Dory, but they did. It's so tempting. To make two main characters of opposite gender love interests. I mentioned it in I the last one, yeah. I was so worried that they were going yeah. to do this in Finding Dory. Like, Ugh. from the beginning, I was so worried. And, like, even, like, before War of the Movie came out, that was my biggest fear. And they didn't do it. And they didn't even do it with her and Hank either, which is great. They didn't because, do yeah. it with, with that, like, there, there was none There's of that. no and- love... There's no romance whatsoever in Finding Dory. Like, they so easily could have I mean, done that I mean, I don't know. The... When, when Marlon was shouting ooh-woo at Becky, that's, uh, you okay, know, you actually, shout ooh-woo at point there. <laughs> well, I was going to say... That's the real romance right there. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, they didn't even do that to, like, two characters. They could have very easily done it uh, with Bailey and Destiny. Oh, my God. Bailey, yes. uh, played by uh, Ty Burrell, also from Modern Family, and uh, uh, Destiny, played by Caitlin Olsen from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Highly recommend that show. He's hilarious. There's um, a lot of great comedians in this movie. There's, there's a lot of great uh, comedians. That you can tell that Andrew Stanton was really into Modern Family, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, they they both did a really, really great uh, job with this. I don't really think much of the characters, but I did I did like the actors. I I like I like Bailey mostly because he was just such a dweeb. <laughs> so w- w- what was that thing that he was? Yeah, what was that all about? I Echo was location. Totally, I was totally lost on that. Is that Basic- a thing whales can do? Apparent. I don't know. Um, oh, the echo location. You- yeah. Yeah, especially oh, the, uh, they... the beluga whale, yeah. Yeah. They use that as a plot device. <laughs> heavily. Yeah. yeah. I, I I didn't know if they could do that or not. I was I was clueless. I, I, I won't I'm... say something that, that doesn't really make sense was um uh Destiny who is De- Destiny speaks whale in this. It becomes like a, a, a way of demonstrating how Dory learned to speak whale. The problem is Destiny is a whale shark. As in she's a shark, not a whale. <laughs> I and, hey. and as I was and as I was mulling this, I was I was reading into some of the research and I found out that while they were writing this, they saw the a, a documentary called Blackfish, which is I I, I haven't seen it, but I I know f- uh, for sure that it is very sad to watch. It's, uh, just, suffice to say, it's about the killer whales in the Sea World and how they they get extremely agitated during uh, when they're in captivity and they kill people. Uh, and so they, they rewrote the ending so that the, the fish have an option to leave. Um, the original ending was going to be that, that they would stay at the, the, the Moon Institute. But after that documentary, it was like, oh, God, wait a minute. And so from that, I'm going to make a, a guess. 
and I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm going to make a guess that uh, Destiny was supposed to be an orca. She was supposed to be like like an actual whale, and then, oh god, <laughs> let's not make her an orca. Let's make her yeah, a whale. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> let's make her a whale shark, and and I like the the whale shark design, especially like especially like the. I, I don't think we've, we've really seen a character where, where uh, th- with like so much like um, mouth animation and no teeth. I, oh yeah, yeah. Interesting point. That's a weird thing to notice. It, yeah, it, it, it started. Uh, I was watching it. and It was like, why is this so different to me? And I was like, oh my gosh, you don't have any teeth in her. It, it's like a lot of the deliveries fit and ended up feeling like gummy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, my god! But yeah, I, I I'm I'm fine with uh, with Bailey and Destiny. Yeah, I don't have any issues with them, mostly because they made me laugh. <laughs> they, they they contributed, I guess. I just don't have many strong feeling towards them in one way or the other. They were there. Yeah, yeah. Th- they were they were convenient for the plot, and they made some funny jokes, and they helped Dory. So I don't know. Speaking of, speaking of, they were there. Dory's parents. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah, most people did. You're gonna did. bring up Marlin and Nemo again. It, you know, you know what? It's like if it weren't for the fact that they they didn't constantly say, say each other's names, like they, like the, the scene is like, isn't that right, Jenny? You bet, Charlie. Charlie. Jenny. Well, Dory, you Charlie. actually recognized us this time. Oh, that's right. We don't have a daughter. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's how finding Dory was resolved? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, to be fair, yes, they're kind of boring, but at the same time, they make the the scene with them, like Dory reuniting with her parents, is still genuine. The, here's the thing, I don't have any problem with the with the reunion on the Dory front. And in fact, like when when that was coming up, I was actually welling up mostly because of what Dory was going through. Yeah, I just didn't that... have any of that for the parents, and that should have been, and uh, that should have been such a gimme because they've been like it's such a tragic uh, uh, sort of backstory for them that like at, like for uh, over uh, for however long it's been since she left open ocean, they went after her and they they, they stayed in the same spot, putting a line of purple shells in the hope of eventually finding her again. It's just such a tragic backstory. That should have been such a gimme. But they were boring. They, Eugene Levy, you, you, it's so funny. Eugene Levy, you at could least have tried. done better. You did, there you were, just didn't there have much. You can't blame the actors though. I, no, 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 no. Script. No, uh, yeah, I should clarify. They didn't have much to work with. Uh, Eugene yeah. Levy or Diane Keaton. I mean, Eugene Levy had some funny lines. Whenever you face a difficult option, you should just give up. Yeah, that. Oh, that I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Com- comedian over here. <laughs> yeah, that, that that felt more like a like a Eugene Levy kind of line. They they <laughs> they weren't given much to work with, and to be fair, it was mostly just flashbacks with of children. They, with there's, just, there's, um, there's, be- there's some there's potential. Nothing. There's some potential oh, wow. there. Like like the uh the, there's one of the flashbacks where you see that like it, it was the night where where, uh, uh, where Dory loses her parents. And, and like she she wakes up and she sees that her that her parents are crying because they it's like they they're like worried for her and they don't know what's gonna happen. It reminds me of like how parents would like talk about like kid if they were the kids were. I, I'm trying to think of the right words to use. Like like, like kids like, with disabilities. Like like yes. I, I can see a lot of of like w- with with my parents. Like 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 if they were like how they were like oh god what what's gonna happen. And it's like we just gotta take it. We just gotta t- uh, take it a day at a time. And it's like there's so much you could do with that. Give them personalities. Here's a here's a fun game. Swap their dialogues and see if you could uh, tell the difference. Like it's like swap the dialogues and maybe change like the like the pronouns where he, where um they say like come to mama instead of come to papa. But and and like how would you be able to tell the difference? The, yeah. So. I really didn't want to say this, but I got to be the one to say this. Compare that to the mother and father in The Incredibles. Night and day. (laughs) Night Uh, and day. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So you could say, oh, but 
Bob is the main character. Obviously, he get a lot more focus. Compare that to the mother and father from Inside Out. <laughs> Night and day. I'm so, all the I'm so glad are... you're not only defending Incredible, you're defending Inside Out. We have to put. We have to somehow put up into this. <laughs> hey, he's better than Arlo's dad. <laughs> okay, all right. No, you want to. You want to put up in this? Okay, Carl I said becomes, Arlo's dad. <laughs> Carl and Henry. up into this. Fine. Carl becomes a father figure for Russell. Oh yeah, and without still, a doubt. Night and day. One character, not even two in this case. Night and day. Carl and Ellie, like, she had no line when they become adult, but you can see a genuine, like, distinction of personalities. Sully's pics- mom. <laughs> it's your mom. What can I say? Oh, what can I the say? Camera the camera loves me. Loves me. <laughs> Still has more personality. <laughs> all we know is that she, she's a big fan of Mike. That's all we, that's all we need to know about her. <laughs> she liked Monsters University. Oh. Oh. All right. This is going to be outdated really fast, but uh, the day we're recording this, Fire Emblem Three Houses comes out in two days. <laughs> what? What is this? Charlie. To do with- Charlie. Every time he was on screen, I thought his name was Claude, because one of the three main characters in Three Houses is named Claude, and it is specifically the character of the house that I am going to. So every time he came up, I was like, "Oh my god, his name is not Claude. What is his name?" So like half the movie was me thinking, "Oh my god, it's not Claude. Stop." <laughs> Well, get your Fire Emblem in three days. Yeah. yeah, just wait, Kirby fan. Is there anything else we want to talk about them before we talk? Or And if so, is there anything else we want to talk about before we talk about the ending? Because the ending's a doozy. Well, let's, let's get into the, the ending then, the- since we only have a few more minutes. Oh, the ending's... <laughs> it- so, okay, all right. Uh, I can't really tell by your tone. Uh, did we like it or did I we did. not? I did, kind of, actually. It's just one of them. It reminds me of, like, chaotic ending from Airplane, almost. <laughs> it's one of the few times I remember where there's a car chase in a Pixar <laughs> film. <laughs> and um, I kind excuse of Excuse me, it. Cars had multiple of those. <laughs> Cars, cars, boy, yeah, cars, cars, time cars actually real. had a more traditional one when Lightning was speeding through Route 66 and uh, the policeman was chasing after him. Yeah. That's actually kind of a normal car chase. <laughs> <laughs> Low speed I meant car chase. Other than, other than cars. Or at least it's a, it was a car chase for the climax of the movie. Incredible. The film that had, <laughs> I mean, not really. The I minivan, mean, hello. That was like a downtown. That wasn't a car chase. That was more... Okay, whatever. Either way, it was... Out of all the ways I would have thought a Finding Nemo sequel would end, yeah. car chase was not one of them. The fair, fair. And I go, I'm so happy it did. Good. I'm glad you liked it. I thought it was really stupid. I, but that was part of the charm. Uh, that's that's oh, why the, I liked it. Yeah, I, I, that's why I liked it. It was so dumb. But it made me laugh. Uh, and there was some decent amount of jokes in it, for one, I will say that. And there was a one point where, like, it where Dory convinces Hank to go to the ocean with her, which is nice. Yeah, like yeah, that, that part wasn't so bad. I, I'm glad you liked it, but it really is just the car chase that I take issue with. This is so, like... I just, uh, I just, thought, I just thought it was so dumb. It was so funny to me. But that's, how, how did he not crash that car in seconds? Dory's apparently good at seeing <laughs> She she would how I don't, I don't know. know it's so dumb but I like I it I am I am I am glad you like it I will say that it's like I'm trying I to don't think. I don't take offense I'm not I'm not thinking why this it's more in a bug's life than finding Dory I'm not I'm not saying that I am just saying I did not like it I I feel that it's not for everybody I think it just yeah. just and I, I can see laugh. the appeal. Again, it's, unlike a Bucks Light. But, it's kind of like how you think Good Dinosaur is hilariously bad instead of just yeah. terrible bad like I do. Yeah. So, so okay, okay, all right. <laughs> if we want to... You think of that how I think of something important. <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's just... I don't know. It's it's definitely not as good compared to Finding Nemo's ending. No. That, that, that's, that is a, a, um, a chink in the armor. I didn't... I, I, I enjoyed it purely for the... It, it just slaps dick, honestly. Yeah! But it, it's... Unfortunately, it does not... Um, I mean, like we said earlier, it's, it, they're, they're two different films. Beyond um, showing that Dory uh, uses her, like, 
like cunning and and like her problem solving to uh, to figure out what to do. There, there's not much that's really advancing here in terms of this, in terms of characters or story. Yeah, it's just a wacky and, car scene. And my big, and my big thing is, you know, we could say Finding Nemo's ending was better because of the emotional highs that it had. Absolutely, but Finding Nemo's ending was pretty funny too. And f- funny enough, it was funny because Dory was there. <laughs> but it, it was a funny ending. Dory had a lot of good lines. She sang "Just Keep Swimming" again, and it was, you know, she got, she got, chuck- she got the chuckles. And you even had the point where um, Marlin told Nemo that he met a sea turtle that was over uh, 50 years old or whatever. And Nemo said, but whatever the kid's name is said, they only live to this old. And then Marlin goes, really? <laughs> and it's just like, there's there's nice, fun moments in the ending. And here here it really is just fun. What what um, what um what really bugged me, um, and it's like, it's, it's, this sort of stuff was done so much better, it was um, Sigourney Weaver uh, returns as, a, as a no, another narrator um, coming back from Wally. And in the in the ending, when the truck like flies in the air, and uh, I see trees of green, oh, yeah. Madagascar, <laughs> Madagascar. Um, but but when that ha- when that happened, the, the Sigourney Weaver narration comes up again, and um and sa- it says the the Rex you rehabilitation and release, and it's like yes, got it. Uh, that that that's. That felt too much for me. Like just, just those. I feel that. Like the and like the callback with the um, at the end at the end of, of Finding Nemo. Like 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 um like Marlin again. They're not the same kind of movie. But Marlin is um is is like holding on to Nemo and he flashes back to Nemo as an egg, and it's that's beautiful. It's such a, it's so beautifully uh, done as a callback. It's fantastic. It's I'm I, the the ending, the Finding Nemo, is one of the most best, one of the best Pixar endings I've ever seen. I just feel like if you're gonna keep comparing it to find, Finding Dory to Finding Nemo, you're gonna get mad no matter what. <laughs> it's just it's <laughs> just because it's different movie entirely, and it's not a gonna be as serious it's because dory isn't as serious it's dory's story the tr- trouble is funny. that like she... that sort of stuff is when the movie is trying to be serious like the the uh the point where um dory finally gets inside the uh, open ocean and then the, the sigourney weaver narration comes up again and i don't remember what what the line was but it was just something about like uh like bringing them back to their homes and uh and it's like yes we got it it felt too heavy-handed for, for me yeah, personally, Sigourney Weaver could have been toned down a bit. I mean, it was funny. Like, hi, Sigourney Weaver. Hi, Sigourney. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> that was but nice. that, and yeah. maybe the callback at the end could have been trimmed a little bit, or at least meh. But yeah, I, I do feel like they relied a bit on her voiceover. So, a bit um, too much. so what? final thoughts. Um, yeah, okay. Trying, yeah. Uh, want me to go first? I don't care. You, you, you decided to go first. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> My thoughts on Finding Dory, it's a great, great movie. I actually wind up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. Because it was I definitely better than the first time, and pretty better than the second time. It has all its problems. Don't get me wrong, it has a lot, a lot of problems. Some that are more noticeable than others. But I can't say I didn't enjoy it. And it's... It really did make me laugh a lot, and I like the character of Dory. I like some of the new characters introduced, and I probably would watch it again. Hmm. Well, good. At least, yeah, yeah, it's good. Very good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. My final thoughts on this are: I liked it. Um, it was definitely very funny. I, I can, I can agree with that. Um, the, the best part of finding Dory is Dory. Um, that's the, that's the main, uh, is, is, is Dory and the things that, like, really directly, uh, go to her, like, uh, like Hank and, uh, um, the, I, I still like the, um, uh, Billy and, um, and Destiny, um, the, the, the really great way that they do, like, set up and pay off with, um, with, with, like, certain lines, um, and, and it's like, the, I remember one what we were saying with um with Good Dinosaur was that like there was so much that just felt like 
writing like the 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 one line um in um the good dinosaur it, um is uh if you can find the river you can find your way home and it was like like that was so clearly gonna be something that like uh whatever his name is in the good dinosaur rex Hello? i i almost said rex <laughs> I, I wish it was Rex. Um, that th- it was it was very clearly something that Arlo would have needed to uh, remember later on. But there were, there are lines um, in 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 Finding Dory that like like Dory says, and in the moment they may it, it makes sense why she would say that, especially because like they like she brings up like destiny a lot. It's like destiny and um and that 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 works in the moment because she just it's just something that came to her and she doesn't yet realize that it's a memory it's something it's calling back to something from her youth i just really like the dory stuff i did not like marlon and nemo I, and 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 the big part uh, of my problem with marlon and nemo was that i kind of disagree in terms of the um because like like I I think it's it's pretty comparable to Toy Story three, especially when with the um, Marlon and Nemo like just how many of the of the lines are just like this, like uh like at one point like uh um uh they're they're in that they're in that dark pipe um which by the way was was ugly to watch in three D um <laughs> but that's not a complaint to the movie that's a complaint to 3d um they're in the they're in the pipe and uh and dory uh shouts out to um whale and whale shark friends that uh that she's okay and uh and, and nemo said she she does she does speak whale and and like first off this was already established in finding nemo and second that only makes sense in, uh, if you have seen finding nemo and it is there's nothing that had come up from that previously that that would make Nemo uh, say that other than remember when I I it, it it rubbed me the wrong way all that stuff, but when you remove those two, there's a really great movie in here. That so so the other stuff just become really frustrating for me, and it became uh as very tricky for me in terms of ranking. Kirby, what are your thoughts? Similar to Wash. Story in this movie, wonderful, yeah, so good. It's the first big chunk of this episode of the podcast was us just gushing about Dory, how great she was. She really works. She works way better than Mater, Mike Wazowski, even. Um, she she works so well, and I really love that. Mm-hmm. There was a specific point in the movie. It was when Dory had found out. That her parents, uh, well, when she thought that her parents were dead and she had the panic attack, it was very, very well done. But it happened, and more of the movie happened, and I, I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to compare these movies, but think just thinking about Finding Nemo as a reference, there is a scene remarkably like this in Finding Nemo when Marlin thinks Nemo is dead. Mm. And that hit me a lot harder than this. And I thought to myself, why? Why is it that in Finding Dory, I feel bad for Dory, but in Finding Nemo, it made me feel things, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. it really made me feel things. And I was thinking about it. And instead of thinking about Finding Nemo, I thought more about Finding Dory. As is not Dory. The the not Dory and Finding Dory. And I was thinking about a lot of it, and it really, it just hit me that it's... This this movie is, it's about Dory for for better and for worse. There's so much that's not Dory that the movie just doesn't really do well. Mm-hmm. A lot of Marlon and Nemo have to be the ones that I bring up first because oh man, ugh, not good, really not good. And there are a lot of other things in the movie that are fun, but they don't serve much of a purpose. And then I was thinking, all right, come on. There's got to be at least one thing in Finding Dory that I really liked. And that, of course, led me to Hank because I did really like Hank. But then that got me thinking, all right, well, what is it about Hank that I really like? Beside just personality traits, stuff like that. And the first thing that I wound up thinking of was when Hank said, I don't want to go back to the ocean. I have bad memories of it. And then I thought, what what happened to Hank in the ocean that makes him not want to go back? (laughs) And we never find that out. In fact, Dory convinces him to go back to the ocean without him ever having to confront it. 
So we're gonna find. Gonna we're, yes, we're, we're one, finding this Hank. Means, one, this means we're gonna get finding Hank. Yes, but also, <laughs> but also that just kind of led me to think that the reason why it worked so well in Finding Nemo was because Finding Nemo had all these different characters that had all these different building parts that just made it come together. It wasn't just that a father a father thought his son died. It this isn't this isn't what Nemo wanted, and you see how much he's in a panic to find his dad afterwards. Marlin thought his son died. He's so crushed that he can't even be with Dory anymore. Dory Dory remembers things when she's around Marlin. She doesn't want to lose this feeling. There's so much there. And with Finding Dory, it's just Dory. Which what I'm gonna say this. I'm really really only saying this because I know Wash loves this so much, but it's fully applicable to this movie. Finding Dory, what I think holds it back from truly being good or great. I I think I think it's good, but what truly holds it back from being great, it is the a plot and the rest. Yeah, and that is what I think about Finding Dory. Yeah, and the and the rest is like I said earlier, it's a very it's there's there's not much meat to it. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's, not, it's ranking time. It's ranking time. Oh God, I struggle with this one. I struggled with I'm, this one too. I didn't struggle with it, but I had to think about it just because this is my first time seeing Finding Dory since theaters. So funny story. I had it ranked. I knew exactly where I wanted to put it. But when it comes time to doing this, I like having the rankings in front of me just so I can get verification. I'm looking at my list and I go, where's Finding Dory? <laughs> I forgot to put it on. Oh, <laughs> That was something that I had to fix right before we started. <laughs> well, let's, let's refresh your memory then. On what we've oh. previously been ranking. From the bottom up, Cars 2, then Buzz Life, then Good Dinosaur, then Ratatouille, then Brave, then Monsters University, then Toy Story 3, then Toy Story 2, then Cars, then Toy Story 1, then Monsters Incorporated, then Wally, then Up, then Finding Nemo, then The Incredibles, then Inside Out at number 1. And I should note that Toy Story 3 and Monsters University are tied for 10th. Mmm. Will that break today? We will find out. So, let's take it from the bottom up. Um, I, 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 since the, the last episode, I can now say that we all have completely different bottom Pixar films. Yep, it's not just random. We, You and I have cars too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I will start. My least favorite uh, Pixar film so far has been Cars 2. Is this better? Yes. So, <laughs> Kirby, your least favorite uh, f- a film is A Bus Life. Is this uh, better than A Bus Life? Yes. And w- random, your bottom was The Good Dinosaur. Is this better than The Good Dinosaur? Yes. Okay, moving on up. Um, now, this time, you two share the, the same mm. um, second from the bottom, which is Cars 2. Oh, hey! So, what do you know? So, we, we share a film, buddy. <laughs> hey, so uh, that's good. Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll start then. I, um, my my um, uh, second from the bottom is a Buzz Life. I definitely think this is better than a Buzz Life. Now uh, let's go to random. Random is this film better than Cars Two? Yes. Okay, and Kirby, is this film better than Cars Two? Yes. All right, moving up. Now we all have a uh, different uh, different thirds from the bottom. I'll I'll start with uh, Kirby. Kirby, you have uh, Monsters University. Is this better than Monsters University? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have uh, a Brave uh, third from the bottom. Uh, I definitely think this is better than Brave. Random. You have a Buzz Life. Is this film better than a Buzz Life? Yes. Okay. Uh, now this time Kirby and I share the same fourth from the bottom. Um, which is The Good Dinosaur, and Random has Ratatouille. I'll start. Is this film uh, better than The Good Dinosaur? Yes. Uh, Kirby, did you like this film better than The Good Dinosaur? Yes. All right. And Random, did you like this film better than Ratatouille? Yes. All right. Right now, it's a very boring part. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're getting there don't worry we're, we're get, getting there we're getting there we're getting... It's, just, it's just right now it's very slow <laughs> uh, moving up from that um, Kirby and I again share the, the same fifth from the bottom which is Ratatouille while Random has um, Toy Story 3 
random, is this film better than Toy Story 3? Yes. Okay. Um, the tone changed a bit. Do you want to... Was this a difficult one? I just thought they're both sequels, so that's one thing I considered. But then I was like, wait a minute, no. This... <laughs> yeah, Dory, Dory's, Dory's better. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> yeah, that, I, that's fair, fair. Um, uh, I, I'll then... Uh, did, did I like this film uh, better than Ratatouille? Yes. Um, the protagonist alone, like, good lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Kirby, uh, you also have Ratatouille. Is this film better than Ratatouille? Yes. They, they both have that same critical flaw of a plot rest, but... Oh, Dory was just so much better than <sighs> Remy. Yeah, yeah. Um, God, once again... Kirby and I chose the same oh. six from the from the uh, from the bottom. Toy and boo, Toy Story three. While Random has Brave. I'm the odd one out, apparently. So far, now, um, Kirby, uh, did you like this film better than Toy Story three? Yes. Okay. I don't know what what when we're getting to the part where it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, random, uh, did you like this better than Brave? Yes. Okay. And uh, yes, I will definitely say that uh, I like this better than uh, Toy Story 3. Um, I did still uh, uh, have some enjoyment with Toy Story 3. Um, and I had very similar issues um, uh, with Toy Story 3 versus Finding Dory. Um, in, namely, like all the, the, the callbacks and... Uh, the good thing is that, like, Dory is miles better than any of the returning cast um, from Toy Story 3. Yeah. All right, moving up. Now, Random and I ha- uh, share a seventh from the bottom, Monsters University, while Kirby has Brave. So I'll take it over to uh, Kirby. Did you like uh, Finding Dory better than Brave? Yes, with the with the uh, asterisk that this is where things got difficult. Okay, do you want to explain then? Yes, um, because hot take, I actually kind of like Brave. <laughs> um, mm. it, it was mostly just difficult, just because I really liked the things that Brave did right, contrast to all the things that Brave did wrong. Mm. And I really like Finding Dory for what it did right, contrast to all the things that it did wrong. Mm. So, similar to Ratatouille, they had a lot in common, but Ratatouille was very cut and dry. It was literally the exact same problem. <laughs> uh, Dory and Brave were two different problems, but it... it not to, I hate to sound like a broken record here, but it really just came down to just how good Dory as a character is in this movie. Mm-mm. Which really, the more you think about it, the more of a miracle that is. <laughs> yeah, that that's very Dory, fair. That a side character turning main character in a sequel actually worked. And not only that, but like a, a, a sec, like I said, a secondary character now a main character, and her whole thing is that she can't remember past the minute, and she has to support exactly. a full feature film. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, so uh, I will say. Um, this was also, uh, versus uh, Monsters University, this was also where it was very tricky for me because I enjoyed, um, I, I enjoyed Mike Wazowski quite a lot in uh, Monsters University. And similarly, I did not enjoy most of the secondary characters in Monsters University. Um, it, it, and it, it's, like I said, like like Monsters U like sagged really badly in the in the middle part, but it's it. I I I would honestly say it had a better uh, ending than than um, Finding Dory. So this was where it was getting really tricky for me, and then I remembered. Wait a minute, was there anything that aggravated me as much as the bully? <laughs> And based on that, it was very close, but based on that, I had to put Finding Dory above Monsters University. Random, you also have Monsters University. Is this film better than Monsters U? Yes. Okay. I mean, I love the ending to Monsters University, but I'm one of the few, I'm the only one who actually thinks the ending's fun and funny in Finding Dory. (laughs) I still thought it was funny. 
And there was, there, yeah, I agree with you. There's no bully. In, <laughs> there's no bully or any villain in. That, that makes a I huge difference, it. doesn't it? It does. And there's like, it wasn't really anything that I could really hate about Finding Dory, except maybe Marlon and Nemo. <laughs> I just, it, it was more like I was just mad at the screenplay <laughs> for having them there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So now we're moving on up, and oh boy, we're getting to an interesting point. So now, uh, Random and I again share, share the same eighth from the eighth from the bottom or ninth from the top, something like that. Whatever. F- from here, we have uh, we we both have cars, um, and, and meanwhile, um, Kirby has Toy Story two. So I'll start with Kirby. Is this film better than Toy Story 2? I'm very anxious to hear this one. <laughs> so, I, I had a lot of thinking to do on this. Um, yeah, Toy Story 2 had the prospector for Finding Dory. had Marlin and Nemo, so scratch that off. Um, yeah, I like Toy Story 2's side characters more, but Dory's main character I thought was marginally better than Toy Story 2's. So, there goes that. <laughs> Finding Dory is obviously, you know, a very beautiful, colorful, varied-looking movie. But the fact that Toy Story 2 even looks good at all is a miracle, considering the fact that laws were made for this movie because the animators were worked so hard. So, there goes that. So, ultimately, what it came down to, and I'm sure you two are tired of hearing me say this, but I am I am waiting for a funnier Pixar movie than Toy Story 2. I am patiently waiting for this. <laughs> And none of them are funnier. So really what it boils down to is I'm a sucker for comedy. That's my thing. And (laughs) Finding Dory was charming and funny at a lot of points. But Toy Story 2 is the funniest Pixar movie. I I just have accepted this as something that's not going to (laughs) change. Especially looking at what we've got coming up. uh, Toy Story 2 is going to be the funniest for a while. So uh, Finding Dory, it was significantly better than I thought on my first viewing. But... uh, come back to me when Toy Story 2 isn't so, so as funny as it is anymore and then I'll maybe change my vote but for now I do not think Finding Dory is better than Toy Story 2 god that's so wash of you to just pick something over comedy <laughs> yeah oh, wait, oh I forgot to mention that I know he literally just made fun of you for that but that is exactly how I think <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah no that was great um okay so uh I will now go um uh, you know what? Uh, let's take let's take it over to random. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, you have cars. Is I finding do. Dory better than cars? This is where it got t- difficult. I think. Mm. Really? That's. Surprising. I mean, it I got a little difficult with Monsters University, but only because of the ending. And <laughs> so this is where it got a little hard. But I'm gonna have to say Finding Dory's better. Mm, why do you Sorry. say that? Sorry. Oh, that's uh, fine. But, I'm saying yeah, sorry yeah, no. to, to a Kirby fan because I've had held cars up this high pristine and I don't know. <laughs> oh if yeah, like, eighth place. That's super high. Hey, it's higher than a lot of other films uh, <laughs> uh, that people would argue should be in the top ten. Uh, protagonist. That's very fair. <laughs> yeah, Pro- very fair. I- I'm sorry. Yori D- D- is magnificent. And as a protagonist, and beats Lightning McQueen up the water, and better car chase than anything. In cars. <laughs> <laughs> I know you disagree, and that's oh, more of a that's that, more of that's more of a I, joke. I respect reason. your opinion. That actually hurt to hear. <laughs> that was, to be honest, that's more of a joke. Reason I don't actually mean that. <laughs> oh. I just oh. wanted to say that. Just I'm, 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 I'm out of commission for a couple minutes. You, you, you guys go. <laughs> Didn't, but don't you... Wait, no, it's Wash's turn. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so, yes, I have uh, cars. Whew. Okay. This was tricky. Because I did not care for the for uh, Lightning McQueen. And I really like Dory. I did not care for the, the stuff that was around Dory without necessarily being adjacent. And... Okay, here's the thing. 
in my in my list in front of me, I have it below cars, and now I'm really mulling over that. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Because I'm trying to. What I said. Is it because of what I said? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay, I don't ahead. agree about the car chases. <laughs> I was kidding about that. I told you that was a joke response. Because the thing is, it was like, which one did I... Which one did I actually enjoy more? And the t- thing is, like, a lot of the film was elevated for um, for the Dory stuff, but it was dragged down by the... Like like you said, the rest, and I, and I gotta think back to what I actually enjoyed about uh, cars, and I can definitely say that I enjoyed, I enjoyed some of the I enjoyed the comedy, and I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the secondary characters more, but I also didn't enjoy them to like, to to like the leaps and bounds that I enjoyed Dory. Can we uh, pull a good dinosaur where, like, I mull over this while, you, while we move up your list? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, I would definitely say it is not better than uh, Toy Story 2. This, right here is where, is where I got um, to think on it. Okay. I could say my thoughts. What's up next for me? For you, you have Toy Story 2. I do have Toy Story 2. <laughs> wow. Do you feel that Finding Dory is better than Toy Story 2? This is one I struggled with a lot. Because they both have their ups and downs. But I'm going to have to agree with Kirby and say that Toy Story 2 is better. Mm-hmm. Okay. One major reason is going to be that I liked both the A plot and the B plot. Okay. Continuously. Because okay. there were points where I thought, B, even though I didn't mind the B plot of Marlo, Mar, Marlo, Marlon, <laughs> Arlo, oh god, Marlo. it's corrupting me, <laughs> of Marlon and and Nemo as much as you guys, as I still enjoyed it more. There were points where I was just like, yeah, this could have been trimmed, and there wasn't. I never felt that at all during Toy Story two, mm. with uh, Buzz and the others. So Toy Story two beats it. Okay, and. Climax is better, I will say, even though I do like the car chase, it's better in Toy Story 2. Yeah, Stinky Pete's a thing, but yeah, I like Toy Story 2 better. <laughs> okay. So now I'm alone on this. Something you had just said got me thinking, and although I didn't have a, the any of the, the highs that I did with, um, with Finding Dory... Cars was still a better story. The the pieces that were there needed to be there, and the stuff that didn't need to be there. And good lord, were there a lot of stuff that could that were very close to being there are not there. So I'm gonna have to put it uh, below cars. Don't, wow. Yeah, the it's, the story really did bug me, like the the non dory story. <laughs> And I really and and like I I'm, I really love the uh th- that moment w- where Dory is, is is like in a panic about um about like losing her, her her family and everything like I love that. Um, trouble is that it leads up to the parents and I don't like the parents. <laughs> like like, Lightning and Doc Hudson, they like they don't like each other, and they 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 actually start to like like see eye to eye and they this that sort of stuff works don't you feel special kirby <laughs> see there was a part of me that was thinking you know if he picks finding dory over cars toy story 2 will be the finding dory slayer <laughs> every single one of us for finding dory the run would have ended at toy story 2 <laughs> but, but also but also I'm not going to lie, it does feel pretty good. <laughs> we did it. Yes, right. that is Finding Dory done. And now... Dun, dun, dun. The ranking. Dun. Will the tie for... Who will be in the top ten this time? Will they even be affected? We are going to find out bum, bum. as I read bum, them. Bum, 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 bum.
As I win them. Boom, boom, boom. Go for it. Excuse me. Okay. Do the 16 Pixar films of Christmas. <laughs> it's time for to from the from the bottom up the, uh, our top 17 Pixar films. Oh my god! 17 days of Christmas. <sighs> <laughs> from the bottom up, Cars 2 at 17 points, A Buzz Life at 18, Good Dinosaur at 21, Ratatouille at 26, Brave at 28. Masters University at 29. Toy Story 3 at 29. Duh, nah, Finding Dory at 37. Whoa. Toy wow. Story. Holy crap. Toy Story 2 at 41. Cars at 43. Toy Story 1 at 45. Masters Inc. at 48. Wally at 50. Up at 55. Finding Nemo at 56. Incredibles at 59. Inside Out at 61. They are tied. For 11th. <laughs> They're not in the top 10 anymore. Finding Dory is our, is our number 10 spot. They don't even have anything to fight for anymore. <laughs> um, but they're still going. Yeah, they're still there. There's really no way they can make it to the top 10 at this point. I'm trying to... Uh, Man, it's, let's top it's 11. They're fighting for the honorable mention spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. They're fighting for honorable mentions. <laughs> Oh god! Oh god! Oh boy! There is a very real possibility that we're gonna have this tie after Toy Story Four. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I I'm thinking so, and so like at the very end when we do like like a, a ranking f- without any averages, like we're gonna have to settle this once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is better, a mediocre film or a mediocre film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that that is a tough one. Anyway, we did it. We made it through. Um, good lord. Rev up your engines because next time we're revisiting the Cars verse. That's right. <laughs> one, one final visit into the Pix Car Spective. That's right. We're, it's, oh, it's so sad that we're going to have to end our Pix Car Spective. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Unless, we, unless we decide to go to the Planes movies and. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> no. We're gonna unfortunately, unfortunately, we're gonna have to watch the actual Cars three and not the one that Random and Wash wrote. Oh, that sucks. Wait, what about the Cars tunes, like the Mato films? No, no. So, okay, even if Cars three winds up surprising us and we all love it, it's not gonna be better than than Lightning McQueen on the Moon going kachow. Yeah. <laughs> not even close. Not, not even, even close. close. We could random could like it more than up. Wash could like it more than Inside Out, and I could like it more than than The Incredibles. And it's, not, still not, wouldn't be close. Not now. I want to like throw in like Car Three fan fan script into the ranking and see where. Well, play. that would be number one for everybody. So we <laughs> can't yeah, include yeah, exactly. that. That wouldn't even be fair. <laughs> but uh, all right, I think that ends it there. All right. So yeah, I'm random bystander here. I'm something important. No! I knew you were gonna claim that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, just end it off there. Just end it off there. <laughs> just end it off there.